and 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 I believe that that all things work together for the good, and I believe this is being prompted just so God could speak to somebody about this, because it's an agitation to my spirit today that that people don't know timing, and they think they can take their time to do everything that God has called them to do, and you do not have that kind of time and you cannot continue to have relationships with people that do not understand that David was intentionally the, the, the original intent was for him to build God a house of worship because that's who he was he, remember when I said that, that your heart is a representation of the altar that you are able to display and David's heart was a heart of worship. He was called to build God a house of worship. But because he stepped out of God's timing. Because he did some things that wasn't in God's timing. Because he let the enemy take him off a of course. Because he let his eyes take him off a of course. He missed God's timing. And when he missed the timing. God had to choose Solomon to build his house. Are you hearing that? And so though David was great in what he did. There's several instances where he kept missing the timing of God. Which means I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care if you have been instrumental in building the wall of China. All I'm saying to you. Is that if we don't understand timing. We are going to miss God in some major ways. In some major ways. And that's what really brews jealousy. If you really want to know where jealousy comes from, jealousy comes, the true definition of jealousy is when you watch somebody else do something that you know you can do better. But you miss the opportunity to do it. And the window of opportunity is no longer open for you to do it. Because that's what jealousy is. Jealousy is seeing somebody else do something that you know you can do better. But for whatever reason, you have missed the opportunity to do it. I'm not, because how do you know you can do, do it better? You know you can do it better because you've done it before. So if you're not in a position to do it now, somewhere along the line, you've missed an opportunity to do that. My God. My God, and God is not going to allow us to miss steps. I wrote something down. Um, I was over at the table studying, and um, something hit my spirit, and I, I started writing. I had to write it down. And um, we was talking about the altar. How, how many of y'all know what I'm saying is the truth? Because, I, man, I feel this so heavy. I feel this so heavy. Nothing aggravates me more than when you tell somebody, come on, let's go. And they walk in like you got all day. Is there anybody else out there that feel the way I feel today? Nothing is worse than when you tell somebody, can you, can you take this across the street? And, and they walk in like they just on a picnic. Or if you say, can you come and bring me a pen? Or can you, can you come and, 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 and grab me that juice? And they walk across the floor like they just lollygagging like they got all the time in the world I don't have that kind of time and I'm talking to somebody else because I know other people on this page get frustrated about this because all I'm seeing on this page is yes 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 I know what you're talking about hand claps because we in a window people we are in a window we are in a window, whether we realize it or not, we are in the window. That's the reason why I believe that God have, have literally catapulted this whole altar thing up out of the book and just made that thing just jump off the page because we in a window to get it right. I'm just going to sit here on that one. We are in a window to get it right. We are in a window to get it right. Every second counts every minute counts wow 
Let me look at some of these comments because I was trying to look it up. I, I, I can see it right here. Let me, let me just, let me just, let me just pause right here. Let me pause right here. Let me pause right here. Let me see some of these comments. Because mm -mm, we're in a window. We're in a window. Yes. People are saying the same thing. People are saying the same thing. People are saying the same thing. Because we don't have that kind of time. We don't have time. I don't know why I feel this. I, we don't have time. And whoever's saying to you, you got time. We don't have that kind of time. We have a window of opportunity. We have literally three weeks left. Maybe at the most, let me look here. See, let me tell you something about time. It's getting cold outside and some of us, some of us, you know, I got a lot of loose summer pants and stuff like that, you know. Um, I may have a couple of pair of pants in there that's corduroy, maybe a couple. But, you know, a lot of my little stuff, was, you know, little summer pants and all of that. But let me tell you something about time. We are here um, in the month of December, and this is the 16th. And so we have approximately two weeks, two weeks to finish this course. And I don't think, and I'm not talking about this book. I'm talking about to finish laying out what God has given you to lay out. Because when you step over in 2017, you're in another zone. You're in another time zone. You're not in the zone of what was predestined for 2016. You're not even stepping over into the same demons. You're not even stepping over into the same realm. The, 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 the warfares, the interceptions that are already being prepared. The doors that you are going to walk through. The navigating of all that God is going to do for you. It's already in place. In another realm. In another realm. In 2017. That has nothing to do with now. And if you don't complete in your spirit. If you don't make some decisions in your spirit about what you're going to do and how you're going to posture yourself, you are going to be the same person in 2017 that you are in 2016. Nothing, listen, the year change, the atmosphere changes, the aura changes, the spirit of it change. But if you take you that have not made a decision to make changes into that year, I don't care who shout and tell you. That this is your year. It won't be your year. Just like every year up until now has not been your year. I'm talking to somebody. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I, who am I ministering to right now? I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Because we play too much with time. We play absolutely too much with time. We procrastinate stuff. You know, I, I got people now calling me and saying, oh, where are you at? I'm redeeming the time. What you doing? I'm working. I don't think y'all hearing this. Who am I talking to on this page today? Good Lord have mercy. Somebody said me, please. Nicole Ferguson. That's what I'm talking about. This is the end of the year. You don't have time to be playing around with people. You don't have time for all of that. As much as I would love to hang out, do this. I don't have time. I got two weeks to position myself, to prepare myself for what God is about to do for me in 2007. Is there anybody that's thinking like me? That's all I want to know. Is there anybody else on this page that ain't got time for the foolery? That ain't got time for the dumbness? I don't have time to debate and, and, and all of that. No, no, no. I got to stay where God is talking to me. You got to stay where God is talking to you. You got to position yourself where you get quiet so God can speak some things into your mind. Some of y'all are just lollygagging right on up into 2017. You're not making any plans. You're not writing anything down. You're not. 
You're not planning what you're going to do until you know what you're going to do. Now, I just said something right there. I just said something. Well, you know what? I just really don't know. No, 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 no. It don't cost you nothing to write a plan. It don't cost you nothing to write a plan. Even if you get to that point and you decide that you want to take it in a different direction, at least you have some order. Some of y'all just waiting for New Year's Eve, just laying back. Oh, well, you know, when the new year come in, no, the new year is supposed to be already in your mind. The new year is supposed to be already in your spirit. I'm already standing in 2017. The deals that I'm making now, by the time new year come, the deal is done. I, who am I talking to? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We play too much. Absolutely too much. You got two weeks and you still haven't brought a notebook. You got two weeks to decide what it is you desire God to do. You got two weeks to put a plan in action. That's why the scripture said write the vision and make it plain. And he that read it will run with it. You can't run because there's nothing written down. And that's why there is no hurry in your pace. That's why there is no urgency in the people that you relate to. They have no urgency because they don't have nothing wrote down. Oh my God. They not running with nothing. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. The prophets in the Bible, they ran alongside the chariots. Are you, are you hearing that? They, 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 they girded up their girdles. The prophet girded up his girdle between his legs and took off running. Because those that understand the prophetic anointing, you don't have time to drag your feet. Your pace in the spirit has to come to that of a runner, not a walker. I'm not Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, then you haven't received the prophetic word. Then you don't know the direction that you're going in. If you're still walking and dragging, you don't understand what it is God is saying for your life. And so for you, you're comfortable. For you, it's okay. And that's why you can't afford to be around people that have no plan for their life. Because if they have no plan for their success, then they will become a destruction to yours. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Because I want to talk to real people today. That's right. That's right. Willie. Camelli. Esther Henry, Annette McNair, Monique Bullock. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. My God, my God, my God. You got two weeks. You got two weeks to decide where you're going. You got two weeks to decide where you are going and what it is you're going to do. And what your plan is. Your plan. Oh God. Oh God. I don't know what. The, the, your plan. Does anybody have a plan? This is what this is all about. This is what this is all about. I don't know if we're connecting the dots. But this is what this is all about. Being saved. Going to the altar. Even what God gave me for today, which I can see is obvious, I would not get to it. But what he gave me today. And the process is understanding how the altar, how the altar starts you out in one realm, puts you in another realm. But this same altar also transitions you for destiny. It's the same altar that transitions you and prepares you to hear the plan. It's the same one that sits you over in wealth. I can show it to you. My God, I wish I can give this to you today, but I can't. Because all of my time is just about gone. It's the one that sits you over into wealth. And that's why you can't bypass any moments on this altar. 
when God began to talk about the process of this book, Praying from the Third Dimension. This doesn't lead you to more spirituality. Because I think that's what maybe somebody is, oh, I want to be closer to God. You want to be closer to God, then become the image of God. And how do I become the image of God? I become the manifestation of who he is. How do I do that? I become the best at what I do. I just said something. I just said something. I become the best at what I do. I rub shoulders with the best. I stand toe to toe and I'm not a shrinking violet. I know who I am in God. And I know that the gift that God has given me, I'm able to cultivate that gift. Why? Because why? Watch this. Watch this. Because my gift, my destiny is the one that is offering up incense to the Lord. I have moved now from the altar of consecration into the altar of incense. Where I offer up worship, which means my life and what God has given me to do. It goes up in the presence of the Lord as the altar of incense. Why? Because now I have become an image of that spirit. I become an image of the power of God. Then what I am accomplishing when they said that I would not becomes the worship of the Lord. And how do I get to that level of worship? Because we think worship is just lifting up our hands. Oh, I'm going to sing to the Lord. No, worship is your character. Worship is your character. Worship is what you do. Worship is how you still handle people when they mishandle you. I'm not hearing you. Worship is your word. Worship is you keeping your word. That's what worship is. Worship is you taking the business that God has given you and making it a A-class business. Worship is you waking up in the morning and working that vision and letting that vision be the last thing you talk about when you go to bed. That's what worship is. And what did the scripture say? You can't get the fire for the altar of incense from no place else but the altar of sacrifice. But the altar of consecration. So when I get ready for my life to become a manifestation of true worship, then I get that fire from off of the consecrated altar that's been cleaned off. But how do I get a consecrated altar? I back up and I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. And that's why when you pay that kind of price and you come through those kind of gates and you come through those levels of the transitions of the altar, who got time to play with people? Because when you come from that place, and you leave all those hindrances on the altar. You don't have time for games. And ain't nothing else in your way. You know what our problem is? We always trying to pull everybody to victory. We, we always trying to ride everybody on our back. Because we want everybody to go. And sometimes you can't do that. Oh God. Whew. Jesus have mercy. Somebody just said, my God. Somebody just said, Christelle said, oh my, I needed this. No, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, you ain't got but two weeks. I don't care if you grab a piece of napkin. You better stop writing and stop all that. That's why I'm telling you, I'm telling you, no, I love people. Don't get me wrong. But you want to see me turn into somebody else where I got a whole nother spirit on me about you? Start acting like you procrastinating about my business. Start acting like you dragging your feet and that what, what, what I've asked you to do or what I paid you to do, you just ain't got time. Then I'm done. Because then I, th that's the only reason why. Because some of us have too many worthless relationships. We got too many friends that can't do nothing for you. You got too many friends that you hee haw with, but they don't bring nothing to the table. And then when it's time to bring something to the table, everybody dragging their feet. Everybody acting like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, okay, well, I guess I, I'll, I'll, I'll get around to it. No, you have to, in this season, befriend yourself with runners. I just said something right there. My God. My God. You got to make friends with runners. You have to make friends with runners. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh God. Somebody said, well, okay, well, you know, well then 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 Dr. Bottom, how does that make sense? How does that make sense? Because when God Listen, I've, I've got scripture for what I'm saying, people. I'm not sitting up here just talking out the side of my neck. No, i got scripture for what I'm saying. When God began to operate with the children of Israel, and he was ready for them to go for the world through, the, through that nation to go to the next level, he had priest after priest after priest. Can you hear this today? He had priest after priest after priest. And the rule was, before you can put one priest, another priest into office, the former priest had to die. And so God was in a hurry. It's in the scripture. He didn't have time to be waiting for people to die. And he didn't have a reason to kill off people for no reason. So he said, the process of me getting my people to where I need them to go is too slow. This process is too slow. Even God said it's too slow. Even God got aggravated with the, with the pace that things were going. Oh my God. And you got God in you and you ain't never aggravated with the pace? Come on now. Come on now. Because if you're not, then you need to check yourself. You need to really check yourself. Even God got aggravated and said, this is, this is too long. Because now I got this thing locked in a ram that I got to wait on time in order for me to make my next move. And I got to wait for this one to get old before I can let him die and another priest come in. And this is not going to work. So I got to speed up the process. So then he sent his only begotten son. And he did not send him from the nationality of Israel like the rest of the priests came from where you can tell what their lineage is. You cannot tell what the lineage of Jesus is because you don't know the beginning because he came out of God and the beginning is eternal. You can't tell the lineage of his ending because he's in God and God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and ending. And nobody knows the beginning of God and nobody knows the ending of God. So he said, I had to create the kind of priest after the order of Melchizedek, which means you could not find Melchizedek's lineage in the beginning, nor his end. You could not tell where he came from. And he said, now I got to get another priest that can get on this altar for once and for all. So we can speed up this process so that other priests can be birthed out of this movement. So that there could be a, 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 a pace race in the body of Christ. Well, I don't have to wait on one person to get a job done. And that's what I feel like some of us are doing. Oh, this one got to do it or it can't be done. Or that one got to do it or it can't be done. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just wait on this one. You can't wait for nobody else. You can't wait for nobody else. You got to find yourself in the next two weeks finding out what is your divine connection? Who are connected to you? And what, oh, what do I mean by that? Who is connected to the pace of your spirit? Not who connected to you because they love you. Not who is connected to you because you think they so kind. Or they so nice. But who is connected to my pace? Okay. Because some things are just common sense. Oh my God. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I speaking to today? Because sometimes you don't even understand why. You know what? Well, this happened, that happened, that happened. You don't even understand. You don't even understand. Why friends are for times, seasons, and reasons. Some of them are for a certain time. Some of them is for a first certain reason. Some of them is for a certain season. And when they start aggravating your spirit and taking you backwards. When they start doing more to hinder where you're trying to go than help where you're trying to go. Then that season is up. And for you to mourn that. 
is to be somebody that's a little bit off. Because that means you feel more about somebody else than you do about your own self. Than you do about your own destiny. And so you have been on the back burner. And everybody else is being satisfied and pleased by what you can bring to the table. And then when it's time for that certain thing to be brought to the table, everybody ain't got time. Everybody busy. Everybody got oops, bleeps, blep, I'm sorry. Oh, I, you know what? I couldn't get around to that. Then there come a time that you got to wake up. And there come a time that you got to recognize I'm in a window. And there comes a time that you have to recognize it's my time and my turn. I done gave everybody their turn. It's my time and my turn. And I'm in a hurry. And my pace have changed. And my neck can no longer do the exorcist. I can no longer turn my head around so that my face is in front of my back. I can't do that. I can't keep whirling my head around to see who going to be there or who going to come or who going to do what they said they're going to do or who going to help me. You got to set your eyes to the hills because that's where your real help come from. And your help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Are you hearing me? And I'm going to tell you something. When you become self-sufficient, somebody just said on this page, my friends turned their back on me. Let me tell you something. When you become self-sufficient, when you work hard, I'm not talking about nobody, somebody giving somebody something, but when you work hard, because ain't nobody gave me nothing. When you work hard, I've worked hard in the middle of the night, overnight, nights upon nights, days upon days. I have had to encourage myself in the Lord. Yes, I had a therapist. Yes, I had friends, but they didn't do my work. They didn't do my work. Mm -mm. They gave me advice, but I did my work. I had to dig in my spirit and get through everything that I walked through. I had to make the decision to pull myself up and get to that next place. I had to press and make sure that I'm where I am today. I had to go in my prayer closet. I had to turn down my plate and fast when the church wasn't fasting. I had to walk around the same house that I'm airing from and talk to myself. I had to lay over there in that same living room in front of that fireplace and talk to myself. I had to keep myself, not a person, a whole lot of days. I had to do the work. A whole lot of days I sat in this same room and said, God, catch me. Catch my mind. Because people can talk to you, but people can't do your work. People can assist you, but they cannot do your work. And how dare you do the work? And then get all the way here and start talking about who don't like you, who ain't there, who turned on you, who don't speak to you. No, you would not do that. Who cares? Because friends come and go. Destinies are now. And either you're going to sit here and try to decide how you're going to get out of your feelings about people. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. And everybody that's in relationship with me, they know it. They know it. The most important thing in my life and on my agenda is me and my destiny. And if you don't want to go with me, I can turn you off like a faucet and keep it moving. I'm not hearing nobody on this page. Somebody better tap some hearts and say amen. It's time now. The time it is now. You ain't got time for all that. You ain't got time to be getting all in your feelings about stuff. No, I went out last night, took myself to dinner by myself and had a wonderful time and sat there and talked to my editor and preparing for my book that's coming out in April. 
my watch. Understand the eight watches of prayer. I don't, I don't have time to be letting no grass grow under my feet crying about nobody. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, I don't have time right now. This ain't the right season. And you got to know timing. Oh, can we come over here and play? Can we go bowling? Can, I don't have time. I'm sorry. Would love to. But while I'm bowling, destiny is passing me by. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Good Lord have mercy. I ain't hearing nobody talk to me. Why, I'm jawjacking somewhere. That's why you don't see a lot of pictures of me on Facebook. Oh, hanging out with my friends. Oh, hey, this is my home. But, oh, we doing this. Oh, that, this my girl. But I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm not her. I'm not her. I understand timing. I understand that if I don't do the business right now, I'm going to come up empty in 2017. And I'm talking to somebody else. No, I'm not in this by myself. I'm talking to somebody else on this page. If you don't stop the foolery right now, and lock your head down to what God is saying for you. You go end up frustrated. Because while you're trying to get it done. The people that you're trying to get it done. So that you can get something out of this deal. They're already working the deals of the people that got it done this year. I don't know if you understood what I just said. I don't know if you understood what I just said at all. I just don't. Because next year. You're going to be trying to make phone calls to companies. Talking about, can I get this done? Can I get that? And they're going to say, ma'am, I'm sorry. But we already booked up. And we don't have another opening until October. You know why? Because all them people that you thought was being stuck up. And she don't want to call me back. And he ain't want to go out with me. And they don't want to do this with me. And they don't want to come to the baby shower. And they didn't want to come to the this. And they didn't want to come to the barbecue. Da, 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 da. Them people right there was on the phone with those people over there. And now those people over there are working on these people over here's project. While you just not picking up the phone. When are we going to stop being a day late and a dollar short? I just need to understand that. When? When? Because he's given us an opportunity right now to get it together. He's given us an opportunity right now to get it together. And make no apologies for doing so. I don't apologize to not one person. For me going after my destiny. I don't apologize to not one person. For me making the decision. As to how I'm going to live. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. Because that's what our problem is. We don't think about the future. We don't think about how we going to live. We always living by the seat of our pants. Oh, so, oh can I. Can I bust it out? Oh, a check came in the mail. Oh, somebody prophesied to me and a check came. I know a check is coming in the mail. You know how I know a check is coming in the mail? Because I've been working deals all week long. I've been working deals for the last two months. I don't have to wait till the prophet say to me, I see a check coming in the mail. And I run around the church 50 times. And then I turn around or somebody call and say, oh, call me now. And I give you a prophecy. I don't need that. I'm prophesying to myself right now because I'm working the deal. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now? I'm working the deal. I'm working now. So the prophecy can be fulfilled. The prophecy that he has already given me. Like he gave Jacob the prophecy the first time he met him at an altar. I'm working that prophecy. My God. My God. After the prophecy, somebody got to work it. It's not going to just jump in your pocket. It's not going to come and just sit down on your lap. You got to work it. And when you move in God's timing, there's divine connections waiting for you. Oh, my God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I hope, I hope, I hope somebody heard this today. I hope so. Let me see who's listening. I, I hope, so. I just pray. Somebody heard this today. Who heard this today? When you're working on your destiny, you can't please everybody. When you're working on your destiny, somebody for that season 
is going to have to be disappointed. But this season, it won't be me. Now, you need to just put hashtag right there. This season, it won't be me. Somebody is going to be disappointed about the decisions that I make with my time. But this time, it won't be me. I won't be sitting up somewhere pleasing somebody else while my whole career is going down the basement. That won't happen to you. That won't happen to you. Because you know, can I say something to you? And I'll, I, I, I'll say this, I'll say this, I'll say this. I'll say this. And you gotta think about this. You gotta think about this. And I want you to think about this really, really, really hard. The only people that you have time to spend quality time with is the people that have the ability to pay all your bills when that time come and you need them to be paid. Now that right there is quality company. And I'm going to let that sit right there. I'm going to let that sit right there. Since you, since you want me to come and, you know, go to the bowling alley with you. Since you want me to come over here and, you know, go to a barbecue with you. Or you, you upset because I won't answer the phone. When I have a need, can you provide it? Hello, somebody. Y'all not talking today. Y'all not talking today. When everything get to the point where you up against the wall, can they dig you out? Okay, well then, I suggest that you sit here in these next two weeks and work your plan. I suggest that you sit here. Even when I want somebody to say, well, you know what? You do have to stop sometime and take a vacation. I did. But I vacation my way. Do you not know that multimillionaires vacation they way? Do you not know that multimillionaires don't just go on vacation and shut their phones down and just become obsolete and I don't answer no calls nowhere for 10 days? You got to be out your mind. That ain't how it happens. You go on vacation. But you are available to continue to do business. You do, you do go on vacation. But everything in you don't shut down. So yes, I went to San Francisco for two weeks. But I worked every day. Did I enjoy myself? Yes, I did. Did I have a great time? Yes, I did. Did my time before at three with me? Was that, was that, was that time of, of, of meditation and collection and all of that? Y yes, it was. When I came off at three with me, did I go to see San Francisco and enjoy myself? I absolutely did. Because a person with a multi-million dollar mind, billion dollar mind, understand how to position their life where they're able to walk in what God has given them without one thing suffering. You don't have to exchange this for this. When you understand time, you know how to work it. And you know how to prioritize as to what's important and what's not. As to what comes first and what doesn't. Am I talking to anybody today? Am I talking to anybody today? So yes, I went and had a good time. But I still worked. But I still worked on this topical Bible. While I was in that hotel. Oh, and when I went to Houston. And God had me shut in. I was still working. I was still making decisions about 2017. I was still talking to my producer. I was still talking to distribution companies. I was still working. Because I understand the laws of working. And if you don't have a tenacity about a work ethic... Because some of y'all play too much. I'm not talking about no tittle, tittle, tittle of what you do. 
I didn't accomplish everything I've accomplished and many of you know that I have because I worked a little bit because I played a little bit no that was accomplished because I worked do you think all those people out there Beyonce and all them people out there do, do you honestly think that they have time for stuff like that those are people that are working machines but Christians we just want to fall back and wait for the prophecy and Praise God and run around the church and, you know, just give God praise and whatever, whatever, whatever. And then we want to t blame everything on the devil. Everything is the devil. If it don't come to pass, it's the devil. If it don't happen, it's the devil. If it didn't work out the way you thought it should, it's the devil. But how about some of that is you? Because you have no respect for time. I know what time it is. I've done this before. Yes, I hit some brick walls and some hard ones. Yes, I've gone through some things. Yes, yes, yes. They said I would never get up. But as you see, that was a lie. But I understand the machine of a work ethic. I understand the machine of timing. I know when to grind and when to get a release. And this right here, while everybody talking about Christmas, and I met somebody that I'm doing business with right now. They're, they're, they're major, major gentlemen. And the first thing he said on that phone, from Hollywood, the first thing he said is, you know what, let's finish this deal because you know what, Christmas is just another day. I said, and you are my kind of man. You, sir. Is the kind of person that I want to do business with. He said, yeah, you know what, Dr. Bynum, holidays come and go. He said, but you only have a certain amount of time to open up a window and cut a deal when the deal is right. So you know what? I'm available Christmas. Y'all can call me all day because we need to finish this. That's my point. People who have a multi-million dollar mindset is not engulfed in all the foolishness that we are engulfed in. These are people that count every hour. As the moment. Every hour is the moment. Every second. Not I'm going to have my moment. It's the moment now. Every moment. You are making something happen. And this right here. This last two weeks. Is not the time to vacation. I'm sorry. I don't care who doing what. Then open the Christmas gifts. And get on with it. Because that day still counts. Okay, I, I'm talking to business people now. I'm talking to entrepreneurs. That's who I'm talking to. That's who I'm talking to. Somebody said, well, you know what? You ought to be able to just relax sometime. Yeah, but I need you to read the theories of millionaires. And they'll tell you how long they sleep. A brilliant mind and a multi-million dollar mind don't sleep more than four and a half, maybe five hours a day. They're not in the bed till 3 and 4 o'clock in the evening. They don't sleep 10, 12, 14 hours. Because if you work the business right, you're going to have time to sleep. If you work the vision right, you're going to have time for a vacation. And everybody that wants you to take a vacation... And everybody that wants you to take days off. I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to be able to do that. I'm planning me a vacation right now on an island. I I'm going to be able to do that. When I get through working. When I get through knowing that while my feet is in the sand and I am on the beach. I'm making money while I'm laying on my back. Then that's when I'm going on my vacation. And you better tap that screen right there. You better scrap. No, no, no. We're not going on no black folk vacation where you scrambling and taking light bill money and gas bill money and all that. And you going on a vacation. And while you on vacation, you worried about how we going to keep the lights on when we get back. We're not doing that. We're not jumping on the plane with our friends because everybody going to Jamaica for the weekend. And instead of you paying this money to get your new book printed. Or get your new website up. You take that money and go off and have a little weekend spa raid with somebody. With all your girlfriends and everybody's geek. And we taking Facebook pictures and all of that. Then you get back home and wonder, how am I going to pay my bills? Or what am I going to do? And then it becomes the devil. 
Because I'm in spiritual warfare. Because I'm trying to do my vision, prophets, by, and the devil keep hijacking me. No. The enemy, the, in, the enemy, the enemy that's in me, keeps sabotaging my destiny. You ain't got that kind of time. No, we're going to get on track. We're going to get on track in 2017. We're going to spend these next two weeks. Don't let me talk about this no more, please. Because y'all know I'm a black mama. I'm a black mama. Don't, don't let me talk about this no more. Please don't. Because, you know, something prompted this. But by the comments on this page, I know it was on and on time. And on time. The transitions of the altars. I, I just want us to keep seeing how all of this is connected, people. It's not, it's not church and state. Please hear that. It's not church and state. It's not even, listen, spiritual and natural. Because in the natural, don't none of us qualify. So it's not spiritual and natural. It's spiritual and supernatural. Are you seeing that? It's what the Lord will prophesy to you in the spirit. And it's what God will accomplish through you in the supernatural. You don't have enough natural to become that. You don't have enough natural to succeed in this. You don't have enough natural connections to overcome this. It's got to be the spirit. It's got to help you and pull you into the supernatural. So that when people see it, you are an incense of worship that is being brought up before the Lord. Why? Because when God spoke to you in the spirit about this altar, you allowed God to purge you and purify you. You presented your body a living sacrifice. Remember what he said yesterday? And there in the third dimension will I meet with you and I will speak to you. I'm not giving divine directions from the brazen altar. I'm not talking about destiny on the altar of sacrifice. I'm talking about destiny and divine directions in the most holy place, in the third dimension. I'm giving you instructions there. But you're getting the fire to accomplish that from this level of the altar. So that you can come to this level of the altar. So now that your life and your business can be brought up before God as an incense. And now you don't do worship. You are worship. You are that. Why am I that? Because then you become the fulfillment of the scripture. That says. That they will see my good works. And then they will do what? Glorify my father which is in heaven. You cause worship to increase by what you allow God to do through you.